Hey gang, it's Paul with Sledpack. Welcome back to our channel. We need to have a talk, gang. We gotta talk about that fireplace sitting in your living room right now. It's red brick, a stained mantle, and look, let's face it, that's from the early 80s. You've done all this beautiful work on your home. You've redone the floors, the walls. You've probably even scraped the popcorn off your ceiling, but you still have that red brick as an eyesore right in the middle of your living room. And we're gonna show you how we transform this thing with some ledger stone. And fortunately for you and for us, it's a pretty straightforward project, something you can easily tackle in a weekend and it's relatively inexpensive. There are a lot of great videos on YouTube on how to update fireplaces, but this one has a lot of unique challenges for us. Check it out. We have this vaulted ceiling right here. So on this side, on the right-hand side, there's about eight foot height. And over here, it's over 10 foot height. So that means that top area right there, those top ledger stones are gonna have a compound angle to fit tight against the ceiling. Then we have this inside corner, this brick right here. How are we gonna handle that? And check out this hearth, gang. Is it a simple rectangle? Of course not. Look at the shape of that thing. That's gonna be a pretty complicated piece to fit, but we're gonna show you how we make it beautiful. So when Santa Claus comes down the chimney this Christmas, he can sit on that nice hearth, have his cookies, eat his milk, and get on his way. But enough talking about this fireplace, let's get started. The first step is to remove this mantle because we wanna put the ledger stone behind it, and we're gonna repurpose this game without the brackets. I don't think they're doing much anyway, but check that out. And I'm not even sure how it's attached. Let me get the crowbar back there and see if I can get this thing off the wall without damaging it. All right, guys, we're about to get this mantle off the wall. Let me take you in close and show you what they did. This piece of wood right here was laid as they were laying the brick. It gave them a nailer on the brick for the mantle. Now, when we're pulling it out, it's coming out also. So we're just gonna keep working it out of the wall and take the whole thing out as one unit and see what we're up against. All right, guys, check it out. Here's what they did. This board right here was installed by the Masons and it acts as a nailer. So when the Finnish carpenters brought the mantle, they attached a cleat to the nailer with some framing nails, slid the mantle over that cleat and then attached it right here with some finishing nails. It's just attached with like three framing nails. So I'm gonna cut them. I would use my buzz saw, but this is one of those days where I think I got tools scattered from Bourbon Street to Whiskey Bay. So we're gonna do it by hand with a little jab saw. All right, you saw us get the mantle off the wall. Check it out. We cut this first nail. Once I did that, the other started loosening pretty good, so we we're able to pull it off the wall. And now you can really get an idea of how they built the thing. Here's the cleat they nailed to that nailer, and they fastened the mantle to that cleat. And check this out. I wasn't sure how they made it, but now you get a pretty good idea of how they built that. And who knows, they could have even done that on site. Let's go back over here to the fireplace and look at that nailer. It pulled out of the wall a little bit, and I think the best place for it is right back in the wall. So let's see if it'll pound back in there. Nice. Now that the mantle is down, let's talk about this brick right here. Now, if you wanted to, you can buy pre-manufactured corners and put them right there, cut it where you need to, but it's kind of jagged. It might look good in some homes, but in this house, I wanted a nice straight cut. So we're not gonna use these outside corners. So instead of doing all that, we're gonna make a cut in our face stone right here. And we're just gonna spray paint this black. We've already got it taped off and I have some of this black high temp paint left over from another job. We're simply gonna spray that and we're almost ready to lay some stone. All right, one coat of black paint right there, and it's gonna look fine, guys. If you don't like that look, you can just put some stone there. But this is what we're gonna do. We've done it before, it looks fantastic. We're about ready to start laying some stone. Where is my first course gonna be? Since I don't have my hearth yet, I'm gonna start actually right here. And that's gonna give me a full course of stone above the firebox opening. I had a piece of smart siding from LP left over from a job. I made a nice straight cut on my table saw right there, and that's gonna act as a ledger. You can see the laser's already set up. We're gonna mount this level on the laser beam. We're gonna mount our first course right here and the ledger will hold it perfectly level until the thin set dries. So let's put up this board and go outside and mix up some thin set.
Okay, gang, that needs to slake for five minutes. So while it's slaking, let's go back inside. I want to show you a little detail I did way back when we were running the trim. That's going to make this job today a lot easier. This one by three was always there covering the transition between the drywall and the brick. But I knew it would be difficult to get our ledger stone against that one by three because it's at a 45 degree angle. So about a month ago, I went to my trim shop and I got a piece of five quarter and I made a piece of chamfer strip. You can buy chamfer strip at the home centers, but it's much smaller than this and it's usually not finished grade. Like I said, this was some five quarter stock. Just ripped it on my table saw and I applied it to the one by three like that. That piece is right here, caulked it, painted it, and now we have a nice square edge, perfectly level all the way up for our stone to die into. It's gonna look great. Let's go back outside and see if our thin set has finished laking. Quick tip, gang, get your bucket and a sponge and get the brick wet so it doesn't suck all the moisture out of your thin set. we got our first three courses up. It's going really fast and you can see how nice it's working right here against the chamfer strip. We're gonna have a nice clean corner. So just a few tips we're doing we wanted to show you. These are glued together from the factory and that glue gets in these corners and you can see some right there squeezing out. Can you get that, Jordan? That's gonna mess up your joint. So the first thing we do, we go around and we cut all that off first. Every piece. Every piece. Gets inspected. And we get these nice tight joints. That little bit of glue, drive you crazy. And we are back buttering. And as you can see, we got our laser beam set up. We've done this before without checking it with the laser. And we found that there was a cumulative error in the stone. In other words, it's not perfectly parallel. It's not perfectly straight from the factory. Cause hey, it's basically a rock, right? Yeah, they grind it, but it's not perfect. So every few rows, we're gonna check it with our laser and adjust as we go up. So let's dampen this with the sponge, put some thin set on it and build our next three courses. While thing one and thing two are finishing up the fireplace, Jordan and I got to run to the stone yard. We got to have a hearth made, gang. So we made this template out of some spare cabinet skin material we had left over. We cut it to shape, just taped it together. We've got written on it where we need the finished edges, where we need the polished edges. So let's head over there and see if they can make this for us. I mean, hard to screw that up, isn't it? We are back from the stone yard and that was a complete success. They'll have that thing ready for us tomorrow. If you remember the template we made from point A to point B was 110 inches long. All their slabs were 108. Mr. Keith told me we can get you a slab from Houston that's longer and that'll work, but it'll take a week and we don't want to wait that long. He was talking to his warehouse guy. Warehouse guy said, you know what? We got some out in the parking lot. Boom, they had 110 inch pieces. It's gonna work perfect. He saved the day. And we can't wait to get the hearth in. It's gonna look amazing. Now, as you can see right here, we took the ledger off. The ledger was an insurance policy for us to make sure this first row is perfectly straight and to keep it from sagging. As straight as stone can be. That's right. But the thin set we're using says no sag. I don't really trust it on something like this, but we're gonna try it down here when we put up these smaller sections and see if it's really no sag. But for right now, we gotta tackle this section at this cathedral ceiling. Now remember at the beginning of the video, we showed you that I made these chamfer strips so that this stone had a nice square edge to die into. And I went home that night and I thought, well, maybe it would look nice to have a piece of trim at the top too. That way the stone is framed by a piece of this trim on all three sides. That would look killer. So I came back here the next morning and I cut a piece of curdy as a prototype. So let's hop on the ladder and let me show you what I came up with. All right, I have this piece of curdy that I ripped and cut at an angle because I didn't want to waste my five quarter inch stock on a mock-up. Stuff is precious. Yes, it is. So that fits right there against the slope on the cathedral ceiling. I've got the right miter cut on my stone. And that's about how it would look. And if you're using a tile saw and you're doing this same process on a cathedral ceiling and it won't bevel on you, just do this. A nice straight cut and it'll conform to that molding and look great. But you know me, I want to check every possibility. So I wanted to see what it would look like if I remove this. And this side of the stone is a compound cut. I've got a bevel and I've got a miter. Let's put it up here against the ceiling and check that out. 
That's the ticket. That's when, it. When I held this up here, I knew that's the way I wanted to go. Everybody else loves it. So we're gonna bevel this whole row all the way across. So now that we've decided on this method, I gotta know what is my bevel angle and what is my miter angle? How am I gonna find those? We're gonna show you. All right, gang, I have a Bosch electronic angle finder. Now don't freak out if you don't have one. We're gonna show you two more ways to do this. But I love this thing. It's a Bosch DVM40L. That model number's probably changed, but you can see the digital display and it simply records the angle that these two arms are representing. So I'm gonna put it up here against the brick. I'm at a 90 degree right here. Swing this arm against the ceiling. Check my reading. I'm at 108 degrees or 18 degrees past 90. We're gonna show you why that's important at the saw. Now let's measure this one for the miter cut. One arm against the trim, the other against the ceiling. And I'm gonna call that 109 degrees. And if you don't want to spring for one of those Bosch angle finders, just go get yourself a smaller version of it. This is an electronic angle finder available at the home centers, very affordable, and it fits in your toolbox. And if you don't like electronic things, just get yourself an old school bevel square, just like that. It'll do the exactly the same thing. So now that we have our angles, let's head out to the saw and we're gonna show you what we're gonna do with them. All right, guys, we're out here at our wet saw and look at the sky. It's gonna be a real wet saw here in a minute if we don't get going. So remember our bevel angle is 108 degrees. And our scale goes from zero to 22 and a half to 45. Remember 108 degrees is gonna be 18 degrees on this gauge. Now we could eyeball it or we can just use the setting on here. This face of the blade housing is parallel to the blade. We just match that up and that's our bevel angle. Perfect. It's gonna be perfect. Now we're gonna to have to be switching back and forth between the bevel angle and a 90 degree cut several times. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and mark this gauge where that pointer is, so I don't have to recalculate each time. Now let's get our miter angle. The miter gauge on this saw is gone a long time ago, so I just make my own out of a piece of curdy. I've got 109 degrees. Remember, that was the angle that we need replicated here on the protractor. I'm gonna line it up against the edge of the curdy. We mark it, we cut it, and this is our fence. We can put it on here, put our stone against this side. We can move it over here, whatever you want. It works great if you don't have your fence. Why are you using Curdy for everything? I love this stuff. It's lightweight, it can get wet, so what? So now that we have our bevel and our miter established, let's mix up some thin set and start laying some stone. guys that part is done super glad about that that was a little tough hanging tile 10 feet in the air a lot of trips up and down the ladder but we did it now you remember that curdy piece we cut at the beginning to act as a fence for our saw turns out we only use it for the very first row after that we realized that that drywall ceiling is kind of doing its own thing it wasn't 109 maybe it was 112 or maybe it was 108 so we had to custom fit each piece and all we did we measured the height of the piece the width connected those two dots and cut them on the saw and you saw that little piece that dropped off at the end, that happened six times. We had that little tooth sized piece that came off, but it was very satisfying filling that in at the beginning of that row. And then the last piece on top, a little bigger than a tooth, maybe a lion's tooth, it was the cherry on top. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go pick up the hearth. We're gonna slide that in, put five rows there, 
five rows there with that no sag mortar. We're gonna check it out. And then one row all the way across here on the floor to the bottom of a hearth to fill that in. It's gonna look beautiful. So we're gonna go home, get the thin set off our hands and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, gang, check it out. Look what I have in the back of the truck. I went to the stone yard and picked up our hearth. One day turnaround, the stone yard did a great job. They had the template, so it made it really easy for them. And check out that black, that's gonna look awesome in there. And I don't know if you can see it, but all the flecks in there really pick up on all the colors we have inside the house. The golds, the whites, the grays, it's gonna look beautiful. So our first step, bring it in the house and get it level. What do you say, Jordan? Cheat your Wheaties, you ready? Yeah, how much do you think this thing weighs right here? I have no idea. Probably Me either. 150. All right. All right, easy. Yeah, let's do all it. Right. You can do it by yourself. All right, guys. The hearthstone is in here. I'm gonna revise my earlier statement. I think that thing's closer to 200 pounds. What do you think, Jordan? Absolutely. Absolutely. We leveled it in both directions. And all we did, gang, we just used some of these horseshoe shims to get it where we want it. These are 1 16th of an inch thick. I think we got two over here by Jordan and two over here by me. It is ready to go. Our next step is to undercut this piece of trim right here on both sides. Then we can push it all the way back for the final fit. I'm just gonna use my buzz saw. I'm gonna use my trowel as a little spacer. I put blue tape on the bottom to protect the stone. And rest my blade on top, undercut that, clean it up, slide it in. Let's get it done. All right, gang, we cut this right here and went to slide it back. Jordan's side went perfect. Mine did not because I'm hitting right here. And what exactly is hitting is this part. So I'm just gonna chip a little bit of the brick off and I think we'll be fine. I've got an old beater chisel and I'm just gonna chip it off. Let's get to it. All right, gang, that came out fantastic. Look at the joint here against the wall. And over here at the brick, we got a little gap, but that's just what we wanted. When the stone's on there, it's gonna look perfect, just like that. The beater chisel, that was a little rough chipping that brick, but in the end, I think that was the right answer. I could have used a grinder, but then I would have had a cloud of dust in this room. So now I just have a little cleanup and we're ready to go. I think we wanna attach this hearth to the brick with some thin set. I have a half a bag left over from when we finished the floor. I think we can go outside, mix up that thin set, and secure this hearth on that brick for good. We're supporting it so the stress isn't on that. Point. Boom, so now I'm supporting it right here. And now we're lifting up. See, so we can lift up from the outside and just kind of pick it up. <clears throat> you gotta come way to you. There you go. It's, it's, it's grabbing. The thing that's already got it. Nice. Yep. See? Easier to slide, huh? Right on. <laughs> like that's doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out, gang. The hearthstone is in place. It is level in both directions, as you can tell from our bubbles on our levels. Now, when we slid it back into place, our shims probably got knocked back a little bit. So we just made this little block of wood to hold it in place until that thin set dries. That looks beautiful. RIP to the guys who ever have to take that out, they're gonna have a hard time. Hopefully that's in the 2100s when they're taking this out. At least, at least 100 years. So this thing's gonna enjoy a lot of hot fires right here. I can't wait to see the whole thing finished and we're real close. All we have left to do, all we have left to do is the stone on the left, the stone on the right, and one course underneath the bottom here. We've got that sag and slip resistant thin set we used. We used it up here, but remember we had our ledger to hold everything. On this side, we're gonna start at the top work our way down to the hearth, and we're gonna see if that stuff is really gonna hold the stones in place without a ledger. So let's head outside and mix up our thin set, come back in here and start laying some stone. Hey, real quick gang, we wanted to show you the stone we're using on this fireplace. It's by Rock Mount Stack Stone from MSI. In fact, that's their website, stackstone from msi.com. Look at all these colors, man. Almost 60 of them, it's crazy. And this stuff is good for interior and exterior. And these are six by 24 inch panels. We've installed similar products in the past, not this big, and this is going really fast because it's such a big panel. So the color we're using is 
silver travertine. It's marked right there. But look, whatever your taste is, I'm sure they got a color for you. This blue stone, I wonder what that looks like. Yep, blues, Arizona gold. Glacial black, mm -hmm. wow. Fresca limestone. I used to drink Fresca when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang, we are ready to put our first piece of stone up. We got it back buttered. Let's see if this thin set is really anti-sag or slag resistant. All right, you ready? Yup. Let's try it. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, these are pretty heavy. They are. Yeah, they're very heavy. Six by 24s. Yep. But that's all right. It's not going to slow us down. We'll just cut a little kickstand just like we did down here for the hearth and keep working. Let's head out to the saw, cut this little guy, keep working our way down. Alrighty gang, the face of this fireplace is done. All we have left is one course under the hearth. Let me show you what we did on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the opening. In the time-lapse, you saw us do it a little bit different. We started on the right-hand side and we started working from the top down because we were using that anti-sags uh, thin set. But these are pretty heavy stones and we found that each one of them slipped just a little. So we made those little wooden kickstands to help them hold it up while we took our final measurements. But by the time we got to the bottom, it was a real struggle trying to lift all that up because the thin set was setting up. But we got this side done and we measured from the hearth to right here and it was 30 and a quarter inches. It's the same on the left hand side. So since we knew the measurement for the bottom piece of stone, what our rip was, we duplicated it on the left and worked from the bottom up. Well, you said it was 30 and a quarter, but if each course is six inches and there were five courses, well, what's all that about? You get a little creep or a little uh, cumulative uh, growth. growth. Because you know, these aren't perfectly tight. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. We found that that just what happens with this product. So we started with the bottom over there, like I said, worked up to the top and that top row fit in perfect. It was actually like squeaking, right? When it went in there. Yeah, I, I like the bottom to top method it way was, better. It was much easier. Those sticks were in our way when we were trying to put the thin set underneath them, right? So all that's left, gang, our final lap is to put one course right here. We do have to rip them to five and three quarter to get them in there. And then we have this uh, 22 and a half degree turn we're gonna make, and we're done. I'm gonna head out to the saw, rip those pieces, and Jordan's gonna install them. Let's do it. All right, guys, we just got to wrap this corner and we're done. Now I'm making a 22 and a half degree cut here on my saw and I'm cutting it out of the same piece of stone so it looks like it wraps around. Wait till you see how that looks. Now all I'm doing here, since I really can't measure it, I'm gonna approximate where that angle is with a pencil on the floor right there. I'm gonna hold up the stone and transfer that mark. I can just see it peeking out right there. So I'm gonna mark it on the stone and that's our cut line. Let's go out to the saw and make that 22 and a half degree cut. I won't scrap baseboard to flooring, but hey, I'll scrap a piece of stone to some baseboard any day. We're done, man. It's awesome. All righty, gang, that fireplace is done. Well, 99% done. I got a little caulking, a little grouting to do, but other than that, that thing is fantastic. Can you imagine coming in that front door for a party? Got a nice roaring fire there. That thing is bang. But man, this thing turned out incredible. From the miter we did on the very bottom to the coat we did at the baseboard to this heart that was just an idea four days ago. We weren't sure we we're gonna use this. Our stone yard came through, cranked it out for us, fit perfectly after a little, br after a little bit of brick. <laughs> it fit perfectly after a little bit of brick surgery, but you can't even tell now 
And then we got these chamfer strips on either side, framing it so we have a nice straight parallel edge. And then we broke that trend at the top with a mitered bevel so you can see the profile of the stone. Absolutely looks great. Looks like that stone just continues right through the ceiling, just like it looks like this hearth grows right out of that fireplace. This thing is phenomenal, gang. Good job, bud. And now you're ready to tackle this project on your own, gang. If you don't have a tile saw, just go to the home center, your rental yard, rent one for a few days, you can knock this out. You saw it didn't take that many special tile tools. Pretty easy to do. And there's a bunch of colors. Pick out one of 60 colors to match your house. And while you're there, pick out some ledger stone for your like button too. Because I know you got that old red brick light button. You, you're going to want to upgrade it. And maybe they even have some pink ledger stone so it'll match the quarter round you got in your house. And once you get that new ledger stone on your like button, smash it for us. We really appreciate that. Drop your own tips and tricks in the comments below. Ask a question and subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost at 100K. That would really help us. And we will see you on our next video.